All right, so let's talk about the oil pan. Something that a lot of people struggle with is they cannot get a oil pan that fits their car with this engine. The factory oil pan for, for the six cylinders is a front sump oil pan, and it's very deep. So what you can do is there is a company that you can buy a rear sump oil pan. They are expensive. I think they're in the neighborhood of like seven to nine hundred dollars. In our case, we are going to take advantage of the fact that GM produced a four and five cylinder engine with the same architecture as this engine. They just added and removed cylinders. So on the four and five cylinder, they came out with a rear sump oil pan. Now this is a five cylinder pan. You can buy them for $88, brand new, off of eBay. I recommend you buy a brand new one because you're going to be welding on this. And welding oily aluminum sucks. I've done it. Okay, so there's a couple ways that you can do this. What I did on my Studebaker is I extended the sump. So I had a cut that looked something like this. And I basically cut the oil pan along that line and then I ex expanded it and then I took segments out of the six cylinder oil pan rail and I added them in to fill the gap. In this case we don't have the room for a very wide sump like this. We need a sump that's very short. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut here and all the way across and then we're going to extend this shallower section and that will be well I guess it'll be like this and that will be what fills the gap and we will retain the smaller oil sump we may extend this a little bit to get the oil volume but that's how we're going to do it on this car so let's get to work
So we're about 75% done with our oil pan here. Um, you can see here is what we started with. It is a uh, regular old five cylinder pan and you can see that the new pan is significantly longer. So a couple of the challenges that we had to overcome is this area of the oil pan is meant to clear the steering rack. So we had to move that part of the pan back to match the original because that actually clears the uh, steering rack perfectly. Also, we wanted to extend the sump so that we would have more oil capacity. So we added about inch and three quarter to here and basically got it as close to the tubular K member as we could. Some people have asked why not buy the oil pan that you can buy from the aftermarket. Um, there's a company called Mtech. They make a rear sump oil pan for a Vortec 4200. So I'm going to go through why I like to make my own pan. First of all, cost. Um, the Mtech pan is about $700. Personally, I would rather invest in forged rods and pistons than spend that much on an oil pan. I have a welder, I have skills. Also, the car is being built for the $2,000 challenge. So we can't, <laughs> we can't justify uh, using 35% of our budget on a oil pan. So that's one reason. Another reason, the Mtech pan only holds five quarts. So one of the uh, issues with this engine, and probably an issue with almost every inline six, is the oil gets trapped up in the head and it can't effectively drain back into the sump, so you starve the engine of oil and you spin bearings and trash your engine. So, what I like about the factory five cylinder pan is it has baffles. So, you'll see these baffles along here. They are meant, the uh, head drains drain down through here, and it is meant to block the windage of the crankshaft from uh, diminishing the uh, drain of oil from the head and get it back into the sump. The MTEC oil pan does not have these baffles. So more capacity means you can run the engine for longer and um, it will not run out of oil and these baffles help return oil back to the oil sump. I think that's where we're going to call this episode. That's how you make a effective rear sump oil pan for your Vortec 4200. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.